Uh, ay, sakit talaga siya. O, tingnan mo. <laughs> nag, ano, nag, nag, ano pa. Hi, Bong. <laughs> Siguro, let's ask Anna, Sister Anna, to uh, lead us in our opening prayer. Sister Anna, let's pray. Unmute myself. Okay, let's bow our hand. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for this night, O oh Lord. We thank you for the opportunity once again, O oh Lord God Jesus, tonight that we are gathering in your presence, O oh Lord God Jesus. And also, Lord, we ask you, Lord God Jesus, to be in our midst tonight so we can enjoy um, talking and fellowshipping, O oh Lord God Jesus, as we learn about your words, O oh Lord God Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord, for every blessing, O oh Lord God, every day, O oh Lord God Jesus for protecting us every day, O oh Lord God. And thank you also, O oh Lord God Jesus, for Pastor, O oh Lord. Um, bless him, O oh Lord God Jesus, and continue using him, O oh Lord God, as a channel of your blessings, O oh Lord. We thank you so much. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 May tanong ako sa inyo. Naka, sino sa inyo ang nakasakay na ng cruise ship? Kasi ako hindi pa ako nakakasakay ng cruise ship eh. So, uh, pangalawang Hello, tanong, uh, oh. si cruise. Oh. Ngayon, uh, kung nakasakay ka na sa cruise ship, nakasakay na ako sa, <laughs> sa ship, sa ship pero hindi cruise. No, uh, mula, mula Manila to Cebu. Pero nung sumakay kayo ng barko sa, ano ba, sa cruise ship, lalo na pag uh, yung, uh, ano nga, yung uh, Disney cruise, mga ganun, Alaskan cruise, ano yung paborito niyong ginagawa sa Hi. mga three days lang naman yan. Five, five days yan, mga ganyan. So, ano yung paborito yung ginagawa? Okay. Ay, tayo kala Reggie. Kaya, G. Okay. Second tanong yun? Oo. Oh. First tanong. Is, Ang unang tanong, uh, nakasakay ka na ba ng cruise ship, barko, pagkatapos, ano yung paborito mong ano yung paborito mong ginagawa doon? Ano yung gustong gusto mo sa cruise ship? Ah, uh, uh, ano muna? Go. Okay, ko muna lahat ha? tapos para tapos Hindi pa ako nakakasakay ng ano eh. I mean, nakasakay na ako ng lang. <laughs> Not the bar ko. <laughs> Papunta ng ano, sa California. From Long Beach to Catalina Island lang. Sightseeing. Oh, Paborito kong... Yun. Sightseeing lang. Sightseeing, sightseeing. sa dagat. Yeah. Uh, hoping na makakita ako ng mga dolphins. Mga ganun. Yeah. So, so yun yung favorite mong ano. Yun yung expect uh-huh. mo na gagawin. Or yes. ginagawa. Yeah. yeah. Sige. How about Tita Fe? Kayo, Tita Fe? Ano yun, Pastor? Uh, nakasakay na po kayo ng barko, Tita Fe, or cruise ship. Oh yeah. Apo, ano po yung paborito niyang when ginagawa doon? I was young. I don't rem- quite remember pastor kasi maliit pa ako noon. After that, I didn't have the chance anymore to ride. Mhm. Pero uh uh, uh, di, uh did you find it like exciting, uh masaya yung feeling na enjoy niyo ba? Mas- masaya because of the fact that you are able to see nature you know and then you can see the ocean mm-hmm. and uh, the speed gives excitement mm-hmm. that's all i remember pastor yep okay how about sina reggie sina george at saka sina jamie jamie muna jamie go um my favorite part of a cruise i would say a limited food. Wow, <laughs> sarap nun. <laughs> food and drinks. And also their ano, unlimited entertainment all, all day and night time. Teka, 24 hours ba yung buffet? Uh, oh, well, wow. 24 hours sila may pagkain. They have pizza upstairs. Room service. Sandwiches. Uh, room sandwich. service. Uh, ano yun? Kumbaga, unlimited yun. Yeah. Yes. Sa tuwing na magugutom ka, pwede ka order. Yes. Just tip so, mo yun. Kasama na sa bill mo yun. Parang ganun. 
kasama na sa ano uh-huh. yun, sa per person. Eh, naku, Did tataba ka pala doon. Para ka na-quarantine, tataba ka pala doon. Five pounds, ten pounds. Yeah. And then, la- oh, marami, ito, 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 every ito. entertainment, casino, oh, like, karaoke. Nandun lahat. Uh, all band, they have a club. Stand-up comedian. Yeah, comedy. Disco. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite. Wow. Happy. How about si George? No, 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 no. Karaoke. Uh, Paborito ko, ano, yung sa Cruz. Ayun, ano sinabi niya ni Shami? Anong pinaka? Pinaka, ano, karaoke. Ayo, everyday yun. Everyday kami nagkakas. Tsaka, tsaka yung ano, yung, yung pagbababa ka ng barko, yung pupunta ka sa Mexico. Dagat. Oo, oh, yung parang ano, magmamamasyal. Mamasyal, yun. Sa mga port. Teka, oh, madami, madami bang magaling kumanta doon sa barko? Oo, oh, marami rin mm-hmm. Marami din. Eh, mar- Meron marami din. ding magagaling eh, pero may mga pangit din mga boses. Mm. <laughs> Wala naman eh, karo okay lahat mag- marunong. Yeah. How about you, Reg? Siyempre, pagkain, unlimited yan. Alam mo, may kumwento ako sa'yo, Pastor. Nung bata ako, nakikita uh. ko sa magazine yung mga food na unlimited sa buffet. Sa cruise yun eh, na nakikita ko. Hmm. Sabi ko, nakuha ito yung dream ko. <laughs> ang babaw ng dream ko naman, bata ako. Nakita ko yung mga food na unlimited na ang dami-dami sa cruise. <laughs> yan. <laughs> At least atupad. <laughs> yan. Tsaka atupad na yun. Unlimited food. Tapos ano, yung show. Manonood ka ng mga concert, show. Libre. Yan. Unlimited mm-hmm. din. Yeah. So, pinag-uusapan natin yung cruise ship, no? Eh, lahat kayo. So, yan yeah, ko muna kay lahat. Yan. Lahat kayo, ano eh. Uh, pleasant yung mga experiences. Tapos, yeah. gusto nyo na, ano, gusto nyo na yung pagkain, yung entertainment, everything. Pero, merong isang propeta na medyo hindi niya na-enjoy yung kanyang ride na sumakay siya ng bako. <laughs> Pag-usapan natin, actually, si Risto, ah, uh, four Wednesdays, on the third Wednesday na tayo ngayon. And uh, yung chapter one and chapter two, i, ya, ano natin, i, tawag nito, i-review lang natin. Pero ang focus talaga natin pag-usapan, yung chapter three for tonight. So, game na ba kayo? Game na. Ayan. So, dito, sa yung hinati-hati natin, yung Book of Jonah, Apat na chapters lang naman kasi yun, may ikti lang. Uh, yung first chapter, it talks about si Jonah na sa loob ng barko. No, parang kayo, yun experience yun. No, he's running away from God. Tumatakbo siya, papalayo sa Diyos. Si Jonah naman sa chapter 2, nasa loob na lang siya ng malaking isda. No, he's running to God. So papalapit naman siya sa Diyos, humingi siya ng tulong. Sa chapter 3 naman, si Jonah on a street of Nineveh, kung saan siya pinapapunta ng Diyos. Ito naman, running for God. Kung baga, uh, kasanggan dikit niya na si Lord. Kung baga, itinatakbo niya na si Lord. Parang gano'n. Nagmi-ministry na siya. And uh, chapter 4 naman, Jonah, under a tree, ito naman, running without God. So medyo masama yung kanyang uh, feeling dito sa chapter 4. Pero mag-recap muna tayo. Ano? Kasi uh, tapos na yung episode 1 and episode 2. So, so chapter 1, si Jonah in a boat running away from God. Naniniwala ba kayo dito? No? Pakibasa nga, uh, Jamie? Jamie, pakibasa. Jamie? Ako naghang. Naghang yata. Bilasan niya na ulit mo. Oh, you can okay, attempt to run away from God, but you can... Yeah. So, you can attempt to run away from God. Pwede kang subukan mo, tumakbo sa Diyos, pero hindi mo daw ma-outrun ang Diyos. Bakit? Sa palagay nyo, bakit hindi mo ma-outrun ang Diyos? Kahit tumakbo ka ng tumakbo. Tita Fe, why, why do you think that we cannot outrun God? It's because God is omnipresent. Mm-hmm. He is present everywhere. Amen. 
it, it, and it, also it, were uh, created in the image of them. So mm -hmm. we were running away from them. They're mm -hmm. made, by, made by him. So you can't yeah. So I agree with Jamie, no? Na creation tayo ni Lord. As well as creation niya ang bumundo. He's the creator of heaven and earth. Sabi ni Tita Fe, omnipresent. Di ba? Omniscient. So kahit, na, kahit saan, nandun siya. Omnipresent. Omnipotent. Pinaka-powerful. Omniscient. No? Ay, ay, ang Diyos, it doesn't make sense na makipagtalo sa Diyos. Kasi siya yung gumawa. So para kang langgam na gumawa ka. Albawa, ikaw, naglalaro ba kayo ng bata noon na yung bang sa mga gumagawa kayo ng mga buha-buhangin para makastil yung buhangin. Tapos nilalagyan nyo ng langgam. Di ba? So para kang langgam dun sa ginawa mong kastil yung buhangin, kunyari ikaw si Lord, kahit anong takbo ng langgam, aabutan na taabutan mo. Kasi mas malaki ka eh. Kasi ikaw yung creator ng kastil yung buhangin eh. So ganun din. Ano? It doesn't make sense na takbuhan mo ang Diyos. Siya yung creator eh. Siya yung uh, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Siya yung gumawa sa iyo. Paano mo tatakbuhan? Yung gumawa sa iyo, di ba? Alam niyo na O oh, sige, go ahead, Jane. Medyo naghang. Sorry, medyo naghanga. Okay, go ahead yan. Oops, medyo naghang kayo. Uh, learning number one. Okay, talaga. Uh, Si ano po nandiyan eh si Bong. In daw siya. Naghahang daw tayo. Wala, naghahang kami pastor. Okay na, good. Oh, good na, okay na. Hi Bong. Okay. Hello, good evening po. Good evening. I am... Hope you're feeling better. To everyone. <laughs> I'm fine po, but I'm just on a medyo masakit lang ang katawan. <laughs> Papapapay na si Simbang mamaya. Okay, Jamie, kindly read again. Uh, okay, so learning. Number one, runners like Jonah will run to dangerous places. Number two, runners like Jonah always has a fair, uh, fair to pay. Number three, you can never flee from the presence of God. Number four, runners like Jonah will always cause heartache and suffering. Uh, a, you will suffer. B, others will suffer. B, runners like Jonah fail to realize that God does want to pay you back. He wants to bring you back. Mm -hmm. So ito yung mga natutunan sa episode 1, sa chapter 1. Una, uh, kasi ganito yung story niya. Recap ko lang kayo. Tinawag ni Lord si Jonah para mag-preach sa Nineveh. Yung Nineveh, yun yung modern day Iraq ngayon. Eh, si Jonah, eh, ayaw sumunod. Yes. Yeah. Big sabihin, disobedient, matigas ang ulo. Imbis na pumunta siya papuntang Texas, pumunta siya papuntang California. Parang ganun. So, east and west. Parang ganun. So, uh, ang problema, napuntahan ni, ni Jonah eh, isang malaking dilubyo. No? Kasi sinakyan niyang barko, eh, uh, tinamaan ng matinding uh, storm. No? So, uh, si Jonah... Imbis na lumapit sa Diyos, nung lumayo siya sa Diyos, napunta siya sa dangerous places. Do you agree na kapag ang tao nabubuhay ng malayo sa Diyos, napupunta sa dangerous places, napupunta sa dangerous situation, napupunta dun sa mga alanganin na alam mong wala kang protection ng Diyos? Do you agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Ganun din si Jonah, ano, sabi dito, runners like Jonah, pwedeng ikaw, pwedeng ako. Uh, dito daw, uh, kapag tumakbo tayo sa Diyos, we will uh, pay the fare. Kasi si Jonah, hindi niya naman kailangan sanang gumasos. Eh. All he has to do is go to, the, to Nineveh na hindi niya kailangan magbarko. Since gusto niya lumayo sa Diyos, so makay siya ng barko, nagbayad pa siya no, ng pamasahe. So dito, Naniniwala ba kayo na kapag ka lumayo ka sa Diyos, you have to pay the price. The price of like mawawalan ka ng time, mawawalan ka ng effort, mawawalan ka ng opportunity. Masasayang yung eh, wasted life. Nakuha natin. So, ganun yung experience si Jonah. 
Tapos dito nga, sa number three, ni-reiterate na, syempre, we can never free the presence of God. Yung nga yung natin kanina. And number four, sabi dyan, runners like Jonah will always cause heartache and suffering. Ayan. Kapag ka daw ikaw, takbo ka ng takbo. No. Away from God. Magsasuffer ka daw. Kakaroon ka daw ng heartache. Kakaroon ka daw ng suffering. Alam nyo sino-sino yung particularly sa suffering, sino unang tatamaan? Ikaw. Pwede ka mag-suffer physically, kagaya na nangyari ka Jonah. Pwede ka mag-suffer emotionally. Pwede ka mag-suffer mentally, psychologically. No? Hindi lang ikaw mag-suffer. Others will suffer. Alam nyo, nangyari doon sa mga seafarers na kasakay ng barko, takot na takot sila, nag-suffer sila. Kasi they don't deserve na mabagyo. Eh because uh, meron silang kasamang matigas ang ulo, ayun, eh, nag-suffer sila. Kapag ikaw, runner like Jonah, tumatakbo ka pa palayo sa Diyos, ang mangyayari, people around you will suffer. When you start sinning, magsasuffer unang-una ang pamilya mo. Magsasuffer ang asawa mo. Magsasuffer ang anak mo. So, it, 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 hindi siya, ano eh, hindi siya, what do you call this, hindi siya, uh, hindi siya, hindi siya worth it na, magsa, uh, na tumakbo away from the Lord. Dito, sinabi, sorry, uh, runners like Jonah fail to realize that God does not want to pay you back. He wants to bring you back. No? Maraming tao, pag nagkakamali sa Diyos, tumakbo, papalayo, ang feeling natin, nako, pagbabayarin ako ng Diyos. Ang Diyos, eh, ang habol nito, vengeance. Actually, hindi. He wants to bring you back. Ngayon, tingnan natin to. Ano yung similarity at difference ni Jesus at ni Jonah? Tingnan muna natin yung mga similarities nilang dalawa. Siguro pabasa natin kay Ana. Ana, pakibasa yung mga similarities ni Jesus at saka ni Jonah. Okay, Jonah. what is the similarity and difference of Jesus and Jonah? Number one, they both fell asleep in a boat. Mm -hmm. Number two, there was a violent storm on a raging sea. Mm -hmm. Number three, all the people in the boat panicked. Number four, they were both tasked to preach. To preach. Mm -hmm. So naalala nyo yung, yung, ano, yung, yung story ni Jesus na nasa, ano siya, nasa, nasa barko rin, natutulog din siya nun eh. Tapos nagkakagulo na yung, ano, yung uh, nagpanik na yung mga apostles kasi merong ano, eh, violent storm sa raging, uh, sa, sa raging sea. Parehang parehas ng experience si Jonah. At parehas na parehas sila nang gagawin. Jesus will go somewhere to preach. Jonah will go to Nineveh to preach. Parehong pareho na experience. Pero tingnan nyo ha, isang experience na parehas sa tinawag ng Diyos, pero yung isa, merong, kasi heart issues to eh, merong, yung isa, willing mag-obey. Yung isa, ayaw mag-obey. Anong naging difference naman nila? Sige, pabasa natin kay Brother Bong. But unlike Jonah, Jesus is capable of calming because of his obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Ito yung big difference nilang dalawa. Si Jesus, nung ginising siya ng mga apostles, he was capable of calming the sea. Sabi niya, stop. Tumigil. Nagulat siya mga apostles. Wow, sino ba ito? Ang lupet, pinatigil yung bagyo. Si Jonah, in able for the sea to calm down, kailangan itapon siya. <laughs> kailangan, kailangan ilaglag siya doon sa dagat. Alam niyo yung difference silang dalawa, yung word na obedience. May kasabihan na ang obedience daw ay better than sacrifice. No? Si Jonah, sinacrifice na yung sarili niya. Eh. Pero bakit ka pa pupunta doon sa punto na kailangan mo pang isacrifice yung sarili mo? Pwede ka naman mag-obey. Di ba? Huwag mo lang patigasin yung ulo mo. 
Pwede naman eh, sandali lang naman. Sundin mo lang yung sinasabi ng Diyos. Wala nang problema. Dito naman sa chapter 2, no, uh, si Jonah, kasi ano nangyari si jo- sa chapter 1, ulitin ko lang, ano, si Jonah, tinawag ng Diyos, pipre siya ni Niva, problema, lumayo siya, sumakay siya ng barko, papalayo. Paglayo niya, ano nangyari? Ah, uh, inabot siya ng matinding bagyo. So, nagkagulo sa loob ng barko. Ang sabi, sino ba yung malas dito? <laughs> Hindi naman malas. Pero, <laughs> sino ba dito yung dahilan? Bakit tayo binabagyo? No? So, ang ginawa nila, ah, napilitan silang itapon. No? Nagtas sila ng lads, lumabas si Jonah yon Ayaw nilang itapon si Jonah, pero wala eh. Mamamatay silang lahat. So, tinapon nila si Jonah. Actually, si Jonah na rin sabi, tapon niyo ako, ako yung may kasalanan. Imagine nyo, Kung ikaw tinapon sa sa dagat, sa gitna ng dagat, walang bagyo, eh sigurado mamamatay ka eh. Eh paano pa kaya kung may bagyo? Nakakita na ba kayo ng matinding mga bagyo, malalaking alon? Ako nakakita na ako ng alon, halos kasi laki ng building. <laughs> Ang lalaking alon, no? As in, talagang susuka ka kapag inabot ka ng ganun. Ang Ang problema, wala ng alon, pwede ka na mamatay. Eh, lalo na kapag may alon. Pero may provision ng Diyos. Nagpadala siya ng big fish. Hindi naman sinabi sa Bible na whale to, no? Pero siyempre, in-identify na lang natin. Dahil na nakikita natin sa panahon ngayon, pinakamalaking isda yung whale. So halimbawa, whale nga. So dito sa chapter 2, si Jonah, inside the whale, no? running to God. Before kasi, sa boat siya, running away from God. Sa so chapter 2, running to God. So papunta na siya sa Diyos. Ano nangyari? Dito kasi, napatunayan, no, sabi doon sa Matthew, na there is one greater than Jonah is here. Kasi pareha sila na experience eh. Pero si Jesus, obedient, no, he was able to uh, calm the sea, hindi lang yun. Uh, he was able to uh, rise from the dead. So one greater than Jonah is here. His name is Jesus. Sa chapter 2, lumalabas, ito si Jonah, may pagka, pagka-racist. Bakit? Kasi ayaw niya masagip yung ibang lahi. Kung baga, ayaw niya masagip yung mga Arabo. Kasi ang modern day Nineveh ay yung Iraq. So ayaw niya, ayaw niya masagip yung mga yun. Gusto niya masagip lang yung mga tao niya, yung mga, mga kalahi niya. No? Ayaw niyang pumunta doon. Pero ito yung maganda sa chapter 2 na hinighlight no, ng writer about grace. Ang ganda ng acronym sa grace eh. God's riches at Christ's expense. Kung kayo ang tatanungin ko, so i-unggit ko kay lahat ha. Kung kayo ang tatanungin ko, uh, ano ibig sabihin sa inyo ng grace? What do you mean by grace? Yan. Biyaya. Biyaya. Yan, sabi ni Ana. How about you, Tita Fe? What, what do you, uh, how, how would you define grace? Uh, grace is receiving good things which we don't deserve. Yes. Mm-hmm. You don't deserve, pero you're getting it. You're receiving it. Mm-hmm. Right? How about you, Reg, George, or Jamie? Kahit sino dyan. Ano yung, ano yung, para sa inyo, ano yung grace? Ano yung grasya ng Diyos? Yung, ano nga, uh, kahit hindi mo deserve it, yun yung yung sinabi natin. You will mm-hmm. get it. Something. Even so, though you don't. Kung, bi- kung tatanungin kayo, anong example ng grace? Uh, pwede nyo ibigay na example. Halimbawa, yung uh, may utang ka, tapos sabi ni Reggie, oh, hayaan mo na yan, ako nang bahala dyan, binayaran ni Reggie. Pero kan $10,000 na utang sa credit card. Binayaran lahat ni Reggie. You don't deserve it. Pero binigay sa iyo. Wow. The, the most important the most important uh, um, the most important showing of grace is when uh, Jesus sacrifices his life. Amen. Uh, that sin against the world and and uh, prosecuted him. He still put his life on the line. And that's the definition of grace. Mm-hmm. The most beautiful definition of grace. Jesus giving up his life, right? 
Kumbaga, yes. wala na eh. Talo na eh. Kumbaga, patapon na tayo. Pero dahil sa grasya ng Diyos. Applicable pa rin naman yan hanggang ngayon eh. At uh, magiging applicable pa rin yan hanggang bukas. Diba? Lalo na nga sa mag-asawa eh, pag tinanong ka, gaano mo kamahal ang asawa mo? Alam mo, maganda daw sagot. Uh, mahal ko yung asawa ko by the grace of God. Kasi pag ginamit mo lang yung pagmamahal mo, medyo mauubos yan eh. Di ba? Pero pag nilagyan mo ng grace of God, eh, ibig sabihin eh, unlimited. Di ba? Kasi may unlimited supply in Diyos. Alam nyo, sabi nyo nga kanina, grace is unmerited favor. Grace is uh, something we all desperately need but don't deserve. Right? Uh, unmerited favor. No? Something we all desperately need but we don't deserve. That's the beauty of grace. Grace is mentioned actually 125 times no, sa English translation ng New Testament. Na, nabanggit siya doon sa The Good Samaritan, sa Luke 10. Doon sa prodigal son, doon sa woman caught in adultery, doon sa story ni Zacchaeus, at sa woman at the well. Pero I would agree kay Jamie, sabi ni Jamie kanina, kanina, Jesus dying on the cross, that's the most beautiful uh, manifestation of grace. Right? So dito, sa chapter 2, meron tanong, paano daw nag-work ang grace ni Jonah. Una, no? How did God's grace work with Jonah? Unang-una, the Lord provided a big fish. Pangalawa, God's grace gave Jonah and the people a second opportunity to be saved. No? Yun yung grace ng Lord eh. Kumbaga, minsan tayo, kapag ka nagkasala na sa atin eh, Parang, o oh, bahala ka sa buhay mo. Di ba? Parang, din, wala na akong pakialam sa iyo. Pero ang maganda kay Jonah, eto eh. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, ang maganda sa Lord, nag-provide siya ng way out. At yung way out niya, yung big fish. God's grace gave Jonah and the people a second opportunity to be saved. No? Imbis na wala na si Jonah, nasa gip na si Jonah, Nagkaroon pa ng opportunity na magpadala pa uli, maipadala uli si Jonah doon sa Nineveh. Imagine nyo kung ilang tao, no, I think 120,000 people sa Nineveh ang nasave dahil nagkaroon ng second opportunity si Jonah. Dito may tanong din sa episode 2, what did Jonah learn inside the fish? Ayan. Siguro pabasa natin. Kay Reggie. Reggie, pakibasa. Ano ba yung mga natutunan ni, uh, ni Jonah? He learned to trust God in the most desperate circumstances. He learned that we can forfeit grace that could be ours by clinging to worthless idols. He learned how futile it is to run from God. Jonah learned that salvation is from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Number one, natuto siya magpasalamat. Yes. Kung ikaw ba naman eh, sagipin ka, hindi ka matututo magpasalamat. Di ba? He learned to trust God in the most desperate circumstances. So, unmute ko kayo lahat. Is there any situation in your life na you learn to trust God in the most desperate circumstances sa buhay niyo? Na halimbawa, pwedeng physical danger. Na hold up kayo or lindol or yeah. sakit. Pwede naman na uh, binigyan kayo ng way out na Lord sa financial problem nyo or relationship problem, anything. Uh, just uh, just don't share mga, uh, mga masyadong pribadong bagay. Yan. So, yung ano lang, yung mga medyo ano lang. Uh, light, light. Light lang, light. Yeah. Ako isa lang, hindi ko makakalimutan. Mm-hmm. So, ano, First time ko kasing na-surgery, di ba, yung nalagyan ako ng general anesthesia. Mm-hmm. Yung ano, actually, nandun kayo nun eh, nung 
February 2017. Mm-hmm. Psycho Lord, I you. Kasi hindi ko... Oh. I'm scared ako nun, pero... Kinikwento ko nga kay Atong eh. Wala akong naramdaman na kahit ano. Parang yung peace of God ang naramdaman ko. Na parang all out ako, Lord. Whatever happened, I trust you. Yun, yun lang. Hindi mm-hmm. <laughs> ko baka kalimutan yun. <laughs> so, kung bakit ganun yung naramdaman ko, dapat magkakaroon ka ng anxiety, matatakot ka. Pero parang yung yung katawan mo nag-flow sa peace of God, alam mo yon, wala kang na-feel na kahit ano, di ka pa niya nag-start ng surgery. Nandun ka pa lang sa prepare, sa ano, pero na-prepare ka pa lang. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Pero kung hindi kay Lord, siguro, takot na takot na ako nun, yung kabaka-baka ganun, di ba? Yep. Hindi mo alam mangyayari. <laughs> I know. I know. How about, uh, how about the others? Uh, any situation? So, I'm good to kay lahat. <laughs> yung, yung akin, yung akin, I think uh, one thing that uh, I know that the Lord was with me was yung talagang pag-move ko uh, from South Carolina to here. Mm-hmm. Uh, talagang the process was very smooth. Kasi what I learned was if it's God's will, it's blessing yung yung malaki mong decision or whatever's happening in your life will be super smooth. Walang, mm-hmm. walang bumps in the road, very peaceful yung feeling mo, yes. and everything will ano, be according to basically the plans of God. the yes. plans of God. Even though you don't know it at the moment, pero after everything is said and done, that's, you get a revelation that yung pala yung, that's the reason why everything fell into place. Pala kasi. Yep. So, mm-hmm. Okay, so imimute ko ulit kayong lahat. At uh, tutuloy natin. Sabi dito, uh, dali ah. Okay. He learned that we can forfeit grace that uh, could be ours by clinging to worthless idols. No? Kung ano yung mga, kasi ang worthless idols, ito yung mga bagay na pinagpapahalagahan mo instead na dapat ang Diyos. Mas inuuna mo sa Diyos. So maraming pwedeng maging worthless idols. Pwedeng pamilya, Pwedeng tao, pwedeng pera, pwedeng relasyon, pwedeng uh, addiction, or anything na mas ginagawa mo pa at doon nauubos yung panahon mo kesa magkaroon ka ng panahon para makipagrelasyon sa Diyos. So si Jonah, kumbaga, uh, ang ano niya, ang, uh, ang kanyang worthless idol ay selflessness, no? kumbaga, ay selfishness. Kumbaga, ma- ay, iniisip niya lang yung sarili niya, hindi yung mga tao na Pwedeng masagip sana. Tapos dito, what did Jonah learn inside the fish? Nako, natutunan niya, len, natutunan niya talaga na how futile, how futile it is to run from God. right? At saka Jonah learned that salvation is only from the Lord. Imagine nyo, naging Christian, yung mga seafarers, doon sa ano, doon sa, dahil, dahil nakilala nila yung Diyos si Jonah, dahil sa miracle na ginawa ng Diyos no, nung na uh, Nung tinapon si Jonah, huminto bigla yung ano, raging sea. Sabi dito, you cannot save yourself no? ng, ng wealth mo, ng power mo, ng fame mo. No? Hindi ka pwedeng sagipin yan. Ang pwede lang magsagip sa'yo, ang Diyos, if you will surrender yourself to God. Salvation is about surrendering to Him. Right? So dito, I'm flawed and I'm awed because of His amazing Grace. Ayan. Punta na tayo sa topic natin talaga. So, sa chapter 1, in a boat, Jonah running away from God, papalayo. In a whale, chapter 2, he's, he was inside the belly of the big fish, running to God, papalapit sa Diyos. And on a street of Nineveh, eto, iniluwa na siya. Iniluwa na si Jonah. No? At uh, sumunod na siya sa Diyos. No? On a street of Nineveh, running for God. Okay, so pabasa natin yung uh, Jonah chapter 3. So, at, uh, per slide, siguro mag-start tayo. Uh, let's start with Sister Fe. Sister Fe, kindly, kindly read the first slide. Sister Fe? Yung verse 3? Oh, yes. I mean, Apo, uh, then the word is not... Uh, okay. Apo, the first slide. Then the word of the Lord... Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. 
Mm -hmm. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give, I give you. Okay, thank you, Sister Fe. Sabi dito, no, for the second time, ibig sabihin sa, sa, sa chapter 1, sinabi na ng Lord yan eh, Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Sa, sa chapter 1, nandun na siya. Inulit lang ng Lord kasi nga this time, obedient na si Jonah. Okay? So, dito sa second slide, yung, uh, verse 3 and verse 4. Pabasa natin kay uh, Brother Bong. Brother Bong, are you there? Uh, okay. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Now Nineveh was a large, a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Wow, thank you, Brother Bong. Parang ang bumasa ay si, ano ha, parang, parang announcer sa radyo ang bumasa. <laughs> ang gandang pakinggan. No? <laughs> so sa verse 3, sabi doon, sumunod na no, si Jonah at pumunta na siya sa Nineveh. Ang Nineveh ay dinescribe as a very large city. No? At kailangan ng tatlong araw para malakad mo to. So si Jonah sa, began by going a day's journey into the city at pinroclaim niya yung message ng Lord. Alam niyo, simple lang ang message ng Lord. Alam niyo, sa totoo lang ha, para sa akin, hindi mo kailangan maging eloquent para i-preach ang salita ng Diyos. Hindi mo kailangan ng mahabang message. Hindi mo kailangan na gwapo ka. Hindi mo kailangan maganda yung suot mo. Sabihin mo yung eksaktong pinasasabi ng Diyos. Kasi yun pa lang, may power na. Wala ka namang power eh. Yung salita ng Diyos may power. Pero mo ito lang sinabi ni Jonah, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Yun lang. In-inform niya lang yung mga tao. Oh, meron kayong apat na pung araw. 40 na araw. Pag hindi kayo nagbago, gugunawin to ng Diyos itong city of Nineveh. Ito nangyari. Ito reaksyon ng mga taga Nineveh. So, pabasa natin. Okay, Sister Anna. Okay, verse 5. The Ninevites believed God as fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the, la to the least put on sackcloth. 6. When Jonah's warning reached the, of the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne to off his royal in the dust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you hear me? Ah, oh. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Nag medyo naghang ng konti. Sige, verse 6. So verse 6, When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Sabi dito, so verse 5, naniwala yung mga taga Nineveh. Ibang-iba to sa story ni Noah. Si Noah, daang taon niya ata nag-preach yun eh. Walang naniwala, walang sumama. Ang naniwala lang kay Noah, yung asawa niya, yung tatlo niyang anak na lalaki, at saka yung tatlong manugang niya na babae. Yun lang. Yun lang yung sumama sa loob ng barko. Pero dito, baliktad. Nung sinabi ni Jonah, hindi siya eloquent preacher, sinabi niya lang, 40 days, magugunaw ang niniwa. Magbago kayo. The Ninevites believed God. Hindi sinabi dito na the Ninevites believed Jonah. Dahil messenger lang naman si Jonah eh. Naramdaman nila yung Diyos na he's dead serious at gusto niya magbago. Tapos ang ginawa nila, nag-fasting kagad sila. Nag-proclaim sila ng fasting. Tapos mula doon sa pinakamayaman, pinakasikat, hanggang sa pinakamahira, pati hindi naman kilalang tao, pinagsuot nila ng saklo. No? Sa Pilipinas, pag sinabing ang damit mo ay parang sako, eh, ibig sabihin, eh, mahirap ka. Diba? So ganun, naging aba sila. Tapos, noong nakarating sa hari ng Nineveh, no, tumayo siya doon sa trono niya. He rose from his throne. No, tinanggal niya yung kanyang royal robes. Covered himself with sackcloth at umupo doon sa dust. 
ibig sabi uh, ginawa rin naman to naalala ko si Job no nagsuot ng saklo at saka umupo sa das ginawa din ni David yan so customary yan na na kapag gusto nilang magpakumbaba tinatanggal nila yung marangyan damit nila binibitawan muna siguro yung mga Gucci bag nila at saka ano yan uh, Louis Vuitton at saka yung mga damit nila na mga Prada at uh, susuot ng parang sako lang no baga at uh, ang nangyari dito sa so verse 7 sige pakinggan natin si si George yan George daw magbasa George. Verse 7 and yeah, verse 7. 7. This is the proclamation and he issued in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. Do not let people or animals, herds or flocks taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. Okay, thank you, George. And sabi dito, nagkaroon na ng declaration presidential decree no yung hari sabi niya lahat ng tao anak ang tuwa dito hindi lang lahat ng tao pati yung mga hayop nila no lahat ng tao hayop wala daw titikim ng kahit ano wala daw iinom at wala daw kakain so matindi to hari ito pagka Pagka hindi mo sinunod yung ano ng hari, sigurado, chugi ka, mamatay ka, napapatay ka. So lahat sumunod hanggang mga hayop. So verse 8, pakibasa, G. Okay, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Mm -hmm. So ang sinasabi dito, hindi lang basta mag-cover kay ng sackcloth. Hindi la uh, tumawag kay sa Diyos, no? Pagkatapos give up niyo yung evil ways niyo. Ibig sabihin kasi alam niyo madami naman sa mundo na nagsisi. Kasi na-realize sila makasalanan sila. Madami sa mundo na umiyak, di ba? Na lungkot. Pero minsan ang nakakalungkot yung mga tao na naka-realize na kasalanan, nagsisi, umiyak, ang gandun lang. Kasi may kasunod pa dapat siya eh. You need to turn from your evil ways. Ibig sabihin, tatalikura mo yung mali mong ginagawa. Pero madaming tao sa mundo, umiyak sila, nagsisi sila, pero nandun pa rin. Kinabukasan, gagawin pa rin nila yung dati nilang ginagawa. Ang tunay na repentance, hindi lang pag-iyak sa Diyos. Ang tunay na repentance, hindi lamang nagsisi ka. Ang tunay na repentance, hindi lang humingi ka ng forgiveness. Para makumpleto mo yung repentance, dapat talikuran mo talaga yung kasalanan. Na nakakabilib. Actually, bilib na bilib ako. Hindi ko na-expect sa mga tao na to na wala namang Diyos. Pero na naramdaman nila yung presensya ng Diyos, talaga humingi sila ng tawad. Ayan. So verse 9. Uh, Jamie, pakibasa. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not be paired. Well, yeah, sabi ng hari, malay nyo, patawarin tayo ng Diyos ng Jonah. Uh, and verse 10, sabi dito, when God saw what they did, you know, how they turned from their evil ways, He relented and did not bring them the destruction He had threatened. So nakita ng Diyos, na, na, natuwa ang Diyos no, sa reaksyon ng Nineveh kumpara doon sa reaksyon ng time ni Noah. Kumpara doon sa mga reaksyon ng mga Jewish leaders ng time ni Jesus. No? Kumpara sa mga reaksyon ng mga maraming tao ngayon. Madami naman nagsasabi ng salita ng Diyos, pero hindi naman nila sinusunod. So dito natuwa ang Diyos at talagang hindi sila uh, pinadala yung supposedly na, na magkakaroon ng uh, after 40 days, magkakaroon sila ng dilubyo doon. Alam nyo, ang Nineveh, ay nasa Assyrian Empire yan eh. No? Extremely great and powerful. No? Ang center nito, ang capital, Nineveh, ng Assyrian Empire. No? All the way uh, until its final destruction by the Chaldeans and the Medes. Nineveh was located in a very desirable place east of the Tigris River in the very fertile plain. Ibig sabihin, maganda talaga tong pwesto ng Nineveh. So, kumbaga, Sa Texas, eh, Houston to, alam niyo yun, 
Kumbaga sa California, Los Angeles to, kumbaga sa sa East and New York to, yung mga tipong ganun Chicago, mga prime city talaga. Ito yung itsura, no? Nung kung mapansin niyo, yan yung itsura nung uh, city of Nineveh. Mapansin niyo dito, uh, si Jonah Supposedly, dito pupunta sa Nineveh, pero papalayo, papakabila siya pumunta. At ang Nineveh ay modern day Iraq ngayon. Oh, it's crazy. Ayan. Iraq. Okay. Uh, Sister Fe, kindly read. Ano yun? Anong... Ito, ito pa yung... Uh, Jacob was a cheater. Mm -hmm. Oh, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the cold. Mm -hmm. Jacob was a cheater. Peter had a temper. David had an affair. Mm -hmm. Noah got drunk. Mm -hmm. Jonah ran away from God. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Miriam was a gust. Super. Mm -hmm. Martha was a warrior. Thomas was a doubter. Mm -hmm. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was moody. Moses stuttered. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus was short. Abraham was old. And Lazarus was dead. Oh, pinakamahirap <laughs> <laughs> pinaka yata yung kay Lazarus. Ano po? <laughs> at uh, at uh, mm. <laughs> baga, parang wala nang solusyon yung kay Lazarus dahil uh, patay na eh Kumbaga, wala na ano pa magagawa mo sa patay na so kung kayo yung tatanungin ano napansin nyo dyan doon sa nakasulat na yan kasi madalas ko makita sa Facebook yan eh anybody so inamute ko kay lahat anybody can uh, say something Anong napansin niyo sa listahan na yan? They're all mga characters nila. God picks the sinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He loves to work with sinners. Lahat sila sinners. biblical character, di ba? Napansin niyo? Mm -hmm. Tapos lahat sila may sablay. Napansin niyo rin yun? makasalanan makasalanan yeah. uh, yung iba naman siguro hindi naman ganun kasama pero may sablay na ginawa so, lahat may, may kasalanan or kaya may, may, walang masyadong kakayahan kagaya ni Lazarus ano magiging kakayahan nun eh patay na nga diba? so imigit ko muna kay lahat sabi dito God doesn't Called the qualified. He qualifies the cold. No, parang si Jonah, di ba? He qualified Jonah. Parang ikaw, kinakwalify ka rin ng Lord. No, kumbaga, siya mismo, siya mismo ang uh, magka-qualify sa'yo dyan sa calling mo. Sa Nineveh na pupuntahan mo. Maniniwala ba kayo na lahat kayo may Nineveh? So, admit ko kay lahat sandali. Dali lang. So, anyone can answer. Okay, now. Naniniwala ba kayo na lahat kayo may nini ba? Kagaya ni Jonah. Yep. I do. Yes, I... Do, do you agree na God, God saved you? No? God forgive you from your sin. And then, He's working mm -hmm. into you ngayon. And he's preparing you to go to Aniniva somewhere or to someone to share the gospel, okay. to share his love. I don't know where, when, or how. Pero you, 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 uh, you'll, you'll be doing something for God. Na parang ginagawa ni Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bob. Wow. Yes. Alam nyo, Tingnan natin dito sa first three, ah, sa chapter 3 naman. Ano yung mga learning natin? Ayan. 
Pakibasa. Uh, Sister Fe, pakibasa po. Yung mga learning natin. Learning. For chapter 3. Number 1, God expects you to keep your vows. Number 2, God doesn't want to let you go. Mm -hmm. Number 3, God wants to get you out of the belly of the whale more than mm -hmm. you want out. Amen. Thank you, Sister Fe. So, sabi dito, God expects you to keep your vows. Si Jonah, after niyang iluwa doon sa belly ng fish, napansin niyo ba na uh, sumunod na siya sa Lord, naging obedient na siya? No? Is there anyone sa inyo na you have this covenant with God and uh, you wish to keep it? Kumbaga, uh, anyone can share. So, I admit ko kay lahat. So, anyone can share. Go. Anybody na meron kang vow sa Lord or may covenant ka sa Lord na Lord, let's do this no, for your greater glory. So, until now, hindi mo pa siya nagagawa or you wish to do it uh, somehow. No? Anything na gusto niyong i-share. I, I have my my own experience. Go ahead. Maingay, Pastor. Sige, pa i-mute ko po sila lahat po. Go ahead, Tita Fe. Nakamute na po sila. When I was graduating in college, mm -hmm. that was my last sem, sem in college and it was the beginning of the semester and my, my parents had already paid my tuition in full. Mm -hmm. After the second week of classes, God called me and he said that I have to enroll in, in Bible college, you know, because he mm -hmm. wanted to use me. So that was in Manila and we lived in Davao City. Mm -hmm. And because I was afraid not to obey the Lord, I went home, I left my studies and I left everything and went home to my home city. Mm -hmm. And I, without waste of time, I enrolled in Bible college until I finished. And I was given an assignment. And uh, after a short while, I went back to college to finish my education. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I went back to my city. And I already... Hello, Tita Fe. Medyo naghang po kayo. Go ahead, Tita Fe. Hello? Hello, Tita Fe? Hey, Pastor. Okay, yeah, look, go ahead, Tita Fe. I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Ako. So, I don't know which part you missed. Uh, the, the, the one po yung sa ano po, pag-graduate yung po ng college. Oh. Oh. After I... I went home to Davao City as mm -hmm. God had um, called me to do, to enroll mm -hmm. uh, in Bible College. And uh, when I finished, I went back to Manila to finish my education. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went back to the city to serve the Lord. At mm -hmm. the same time, uh, I worked uh, in the public schools. And mm. it's um, work, while working with God, I was in the public schools as well. Mm. And that was part of my life where I was almost finished with something that I was excited, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then God had called me. Everything was paid for. Everything was, was ready for my next step, you know. Mm -hmm. But God called me and uh, wanted me to do something that I did not expect. Mm -hmm. But I obeyed the Lord because I was afraid not to obey Him. Mm -hmm. and, and I know God was pleased with what I did. Mm -hmm. Tita Fe, is there a feeling of satisfaction when you yes, of course. when you, uh, yeah. you, you did the, 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 your, your vow to God? No? 
kumbaga parang uh, nakaramdam kayo ng parang uh, ano yun, yung yung feeling of satisfaction na you did something na na inobey nyo yung sinabi sa inyo ng Panginoon. Yes, Pastor. And walang fear of mm-hmm. anything uh, bad that will happen because you have obeyed the Lord. Mm-hmm. You, niya have, kanin- you have the joy. You have, you have the joy of the Lord in your heart mm-hmm. because you know that you have obeyed the Lord. Mm-hmm. Nabanggit niya, Tita Fe, na madaming blessings. And it is blessings. a demonstration of how much Yes, Pastor. Blessings. Mm-hmm. And you are confident that God all have fulfilled His will. You have obeyed Him. Mm-hmm. Was there protection, Tita Fe, nung, uh, while, while, uh, while uh, sumusunod kay sa Panginoon, did you feel the protection of the Lord? Yes, protection in everything, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Protection from sickness, you know. Mm-hmm from accidents from any anything that we don't want to happen in our life you know mm-hmm. god there was satisfaction and confidence that god will always give you favor in everything or if any a problem arises you are mm-hmm. confident that he will always help you amen 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 kasi si Joe na po Sinabi niya lang naman na 40 days, magugunaw na yung Nineveh. Wala naman masyadong eloquent na nakita doon. <laughs> Wala masyadong eloquence na nakita doon. Na kumbaga, it is the the power of the, yung power ng word ng Lord, yun yung nag-convict sa heart ng mga taga Ninevites eh. And makikita niya talaga na well-guided siya. Mm-hmm. And as, as far as yung experience sa kinakwento niyo, na parang ang sarap pakinggan na talagang pag nasa Diyos ka, you'll never go wrong, right? Yes, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. How about the others? Sabi dito sa verse, uh, sa number two, God doesn't want to let you go. No? Uh, ito, yung, ito yung natutunan ni Jonah. Eh. Ayaw siyang pakawalan ng Diyos. No? Kung baga, nag-provide ng big fish sa kanya, tapos inuluwa siya, tapos na, uh, nag, ano siya, nag, uh, what do you call this? Nag, uh, nag-preach siya. And yet, Nandun yung ano, nandun yung presence ng Lord sa kanya, no? About the others. Number 3, sabi dito, God wants to get you out of the valley of the whale more than you want out. So kung ikaw gusto mo nang umalis sa sitwasyon na yan na magulo, no? Na nahihirapan ka, eh lalo na ang Diyos, no? So yan yeah, ko kay lahat. Anybody can speak. Yan. Any input sa number 2 and number 3? A- ako may story ako, Pastor. Sige, sige. Sige, An- i-mute ko muna sila lahat. Ah. Dali, ah. Okay. okay, go okay. ahead, Anna. Ano, um, actually, I grew up with a broken family. So, my mother and my my father nag-separate sila when I was really a very young age. Mm-hmm. Siguro age ko nun was probably four or five. Mm-hmm. So, lumalaki ako. Habang lumalaki ako, um, of course, my grandma is the one who took care of us. Tapos kami magkakapatid. Mm-hmm. And, meron kaming kapitbahay na pastor. He mm-hmm. always gather all the kids to mm-hmm. have Sunday school. Every Sunday. Talagang nililikon niya lahat ng bata sa, lo- sa lugar namin to have mm-hmm. Sunday school. Mm-hmm. Ako naman, Dun first time I attended the Sunday school, I feel weirded sa mga tao. Mm-hmm. Kasi iba yung... Kasi di ba pag wala tayo sa Panginoon, iba yung tingin natin sa taong mm-hmm. nasa Panginoon. Parang ang tingin ko nun, like, ano ba ito? Parang mag, 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 kumakanta, tapos gumagano. Parang talagang weird na weird ako nun. So, the second Sunday, nagtatago talaga ako. <laughs> sabi, ko pa, sabi ko pa sa lola ko, Huwag niyo sabihin nandito ako, Nay, kasi may, may Sunday school sila, ayoko umatin. Mm-hmm. So, that pastor never gave up. Never gave up to those kids. Hanggang mm-hmm. sa every Sunday, every Sunday, lagi ako nagtatago. Pero, there's one point in my life na marami kasi akong pinagdaanan because yung magulang ko wala mm-hmm. sa tabi ko. 
marami akong questions, marami akong tanong na sabi ko, Lord, bakit sa akin nangyari? Bakit bakit pamilya ko yung sira? Bakit wala yung nanay ko, wala yung tatay ko sa tabi ko? You know, like, meron ako mga tanong, pero hindi lang nakapagtanong kasi when they, they're not there. Mm-hmm. Hanggang sa there's one, ano, uh, marami na rin akong miracles from from God mm-hmm. na na-experience. And, um, yung number two na sinasabi that God never let me go is like yung pinipilit kong lumayo. Pinipilit kong ilayo yung sarili ko sa Panginoon. But God always pull me back mm-hmm. somehow. Na kahit na anong talikod ko, anong kahit anong gawin kong pagtalikod, palagi akong hinahatak pabalik. And Amen. that's why I'm thankful na, you know, God is always using some people in my life mm-hmm. na pag medyo nalilisa ko ng landas, medyo mm-hmm. nalilisa ko ng, ng ano ko, focus ko, may pinadadala siya palagi to Amen. refocus myself. Amen. So, yun yung, yun yung nangyari sa akin. Pero meron akong, you know, like until now na I'm still battling with this, you know, like to give me the the courage tsaka, you know, like um strengthen my spirit from mm-hmm. that na maiwin ko yung souls ng mga kapatid ko. Kapatid ko sa Pilipinas. Mm-hmm. You know, um, pamilya ng husband ko. You know, mm-hmm. th- those are the the things na pinagdasal ko hanggang ngayon. And I, I still, I still, you know, struggle on that kasi parang, syempre, pag mag-isa ka lang, mahirap, mahirap kalabanin yung napakano, mm-hmm. ano, you know, so, yun so, yung ano ko. So, uh, yung, so, ano, parang kagaya naming lahat, aminado ka rin na Jonah ka rin. <laughs> 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 lahat tayo, Jonah, no? So, nag-agree ba tayong lahat? Lahat tayong Jonah? Kaya ako na sinasabi niya that, you know, that Jonah was trying to run away from God. Sabi ko, I, yeah, I was yeah. <laughs> Pero dito sa chapter 3, uh, pinroof talaga ng Lord na God doesn't want to let you go. Di ba? Yes. Yung makulit yes. na pastor na yun, yung, mad- yung madaming pagkakataon na lagi siya nagbibigay sa iyo ng parang way out at mga tao na nakikilala para you know, to to lead you back in the proper direction to God. Eh nandoon ramdam mo na sigurado galing sa kanya 'yon, di ba? Saka pastor, when God gives you pain, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that he wants you to suffer. Mm-hmm. When God gives you pain, God wants you to turn back on him more. Mm-hmm. Kasi siya yung lakas mo, di ba? Parang siya yung nagiging strength mo. Kasi dahil nasasaktan ka, wala ka ibang masandigan. So you have to call upon him. Mm-hmm. Kaya ka binibigyan. Kaya ka nagkakaroon ng mga ng struggles. Mm-hmm. So I believe on that. Ay, sa, sa case ni Jonah at sa case ng marami sa sitwasyon natin mga tao, it, 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 it doesn't mean that God gave us pain. Eh. Actually, we inflict the pain in ourselves kagaya ng ginawa ni Jonah. Pero he allows the pain to be there. No, katulad ng sinasabi mo, sige, uh, yeah. ayaw mong ma-experience ang pain niyan. Kasi uh, yung pain will teach you somehow in life na matuto. At ang maganda dito, ma-appreciate mo yung Diyos pag tinanggal niya yung pain away from you. Right? Siya yung ano, pain reliever ng mundo. Eh. Actually, yan ang preaching ko sa Sunday. Ano yung title? Pain in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> pain in my heart, no? Paano ba tatanggalin ng Diyos yung pain sa puso natin? Yan. So, anybody else? Uh, I-unmute ko kayo lahat kung sinong gusto mag-share. Dali lang. Okay, unmute natin all. So, meron pa bang gusto mag-share? Uh, anybody else? Uh, for me, for me. Go ahead, Bong. Okay. So, with my experience, Experience for uh, it not actually I run away from God, mm-hmm. but there are just listen again. Uh, uh, there are things that really keeps me from or stop me to go with God. Parang ganon. Mm-hmm. But what I did, I really tried to. You know, parang <clears throat> it's not the thinnest ko kung anong magagawa ng Diyos sa akin, hindi naman sa ganun. Kundi, 
parang inisip ko yung kung ang ibon nga o oh, tama ba yun? Mm-hmm. <laughs> ay dumarating sa point na pinapakain ng Diyos. You know, yung mga ganun. Yes. So ay uh, may naranasan ka na may ganun na time mm-hmm. na talagang parang sinasadya na halos uh, mawala lahat. Mm-hmm. Ang nasa isip at puso ko, sabi ko, from the time na ipinanganak ako na nagkaisip, mm-hmm. wala akong iniisip kundi hanapin ang Diyos kasi naniniwala. Sumasampalataya ako na ang Diyos ay nandyan lagi. Mm-hmm. Pero may mga pagkakataon na par- may mga bagay na ilalayo ka sa Kanya. Mm-hmm. So parang napan ko sa isip ko nga, tignan ko nga, <laughs> ganun, mm-hmm. na kung ang ibon ay hindi naman nagtatrabaho, pinapakain ng Diyos. Kung ang mm-hmm. mga bagay ayaw na kung hindi naman nag- So dumating sa point na yun na kahit 5 uh, sentimo talaga, parang wala sa pocket ko, nandun mm-hmm. pa ako sa sitwasyon na wala akong makukunan, and then nagpunta ako sa isang restaurant. Mm-hmm. This, this happens in Canada. Nagpunta ko sa restaurant, isang restaurant talaga na I see a lot of people eating, mm-hmm. enjoying their foods, blah, 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 and everything. And samantalang ako, I never had any single penny in my pocket dahil nga may nangyari na nawala pa yung pera kong natitira. Mm-hmm. So sabi ko, ba't ganito? Sabi ko ganon. And at the time, I was, I am going to the church mm-hmm. and then meron akong isang parang token na lang mm-hmm. na nawala pa. Kung nawala to, hindi na ako makauwi and nothing. Kailangan kong bumiyahe, wala, hindi ako makasakay. Mm-hmm. Wala akong makain. Ando na ako sa restaurant. Sabi ko, parang na, na, nanalangin lang ako. Ayun, ang ano ko. Na, yun nga, yung pananali ko na kung ang ibon ay napakainan. just mm-hmm. <laughs> ako pa na naglingkod na maayos sa kanya. So, yun mm-hmm. ang pinakaano, na parang there would be a point talaga na mawawala ka ng pag-asa dahil parang mahirap ah, parang pahirap ng pahirap. Pero ang sabi ko lang, I just really need to trust God and then ganun lang ang isip ko, then I did not make any comment na to. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly, someone gave me a call and then sabi niya, kumusta ka? Sabi ko, Okay lang ako, sabi niya. But sabi niya bigla, it sounds like hindi ka okay, sabi niya. Nasaan ka, nasaan ka? Mm-hmm. Sabi niya sa akin. No, I'm okay, sabi niya. Hindi, hindi ka okay. Nasaan ka? Sabi mo kung nasaan ka. Sabi ko na lang, nandito ako sa lugar na to. Okay, mm-hmm. so, hintayin mo kami. Puntahan namin ng asawa ko. So, nag-drive sila. And then, in a moment, dumating na sila. Mm-hmm. And then sabi ko, tapos, hindi ko naman sinasabing walang-wala ako, basta wala akong binanggit. Mm-hmm. And then, dumating sila. Ang dami nilang dalang mga pagkain, ang daming grocery. <laughs> sabi ko, anong ginagawa ninyo? Sabi ko. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wala naman binabagget kasi nakakahiya na mm-hmm. parang just even kahit nga sa church to sa restaurant, naglakad ako because I'm just trying everything na tingnan ko nga kung may tutulong na tao sa akin. Titingnan ko kung may pipick up sa akin. Titingnan ko. Basta, I don't ano, say anything. Basta mm-hmm. nandun lang ako sa Diyos na I trust in Him. Mm-hmm. Kaya yun ang pangyayari. Na yeah. Hindi ko malilimut. Amen. Amen. Alam nyo. <laughs> uh, first, very simple. <laughs> Again, Bong, na, Again, naging po. choppy. Go ahead. Uh, yun lang. Parang, mm-hmm. that is just a mere, ano naman, uh, experience na mm-hmm. doon ko na patunayan talaga na sa mga bagay kagaya ng ano, huwag kang mag-alala, huwag kang matakot, at hindi mm-hmm. mo dapat ikawala ng pag-asa na lumayo sa Diyos. Mm-hmm. Na ano mang dumating na pagsubok, mawawalan ka ng pag-asa o lalayo ka sa kanya. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yung binabanggit ni Bong kanina na sa Matthew yun, yung do not worry, no? Uh, even the birds of the sea pinapakain ng Panginoon. Uh, even the birds of the sky pinapakain ng Panginoon. Anyway, how much you, sabi nga, no? Uh, how much you uh, man of little faith, sabi nga nun. Pero, uh, dito, ang sabi dito, no, God wants to get you out, no? More than you want out. So, halimbawa, may experience mo yung gano'n, na medyo kinakapos ka, kinukulang ka, 
gusto mo nang umalis sa sitwasyon na yun eh, di ba? Na, paano ba? Ba't naman nagkakaganito? Ba't ako nagpupulang? Pero, kung gigil na gigil ka makaalis sa sitwasyon na yan, mas gigil yung Diyos na makaalis ka dyan. Kasi gusto ka niyang tulungan. Ayun nga, nagpadala siya ng mga tao na pwede niyang gamitin as channel of blessings para iparamdam sa iyo na He's God. He's in perfect control. Right? So, That's right. Amen. So, maganda yung mga sharing nyo, no? Sabi dito, isa-isayin lang natin, God expects you to keep your vows. Sa Ecclesiastes 5.4, sabi dito ng writer, when you make a vow to God, <laughs> kung magpapramis ka daw sa Diyos, do not delay to fulfill it. Wag mo daw <coughs> i-delay. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. So, importante ang vow. No? Naalala ko tuloy yung, yung kwento <coughs> tungkol sa promise. Isang promise ng asawang babae. Ang sabi niya dito, uh, there was a man who had worked all of his life and had saved all of his money. He was a real miser when it came to his money. He loved money more than just about anything. And just before he died, he said to his wife, Now listen, when I die, I want you to take all my money and place it in the casket with me. I want to take my money to the afterlife. So he got his wife to promise him with all her heart that when he died, she would put all the money in the coffin with him. Well, one day he died. <laughs> he was stretched out in the coffin and the wife was sitting there next to her closest friend. When they finished the ceremony, just before the undertakers got ready to close the coffin, the wife said, well, wait, 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 just a minute. She had a plastic box in her hand. She came over with the box and placed it in the coffin. Then the undertakers locked the coffin and rolled it away for cremation. Her friend said, well, I hope you weren't crazy enough to put all the money in the coffin. She said, yes, I can't lie. I promised him that I was going to put all of his money in that coffin with him. You mean to tell me you put every cent of his money in the coffin with him? I sure did, said the wife. I got all his money together, put it into my bank account, and to be safer side, I signed him an account pay check in his name as promise. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ay naman pala. So at least eh itong uh, iyan meet ko kayo muna para makatawa kayo. At least ito at least itong na itong asawa na to eh tumutupad naman sa promise sa kanya kasawa. So Reg, alam mo na ang gagawin mo ha. ha? Gagawa ka ng check ha. <laughs> lahat no, lahat ng pera ni George ay eh, i-check mo ha. Sabalan ko sa kanya. <laughs> Pero <laughs> pastor. Kung kayo, ta- <laughs> kung kayo tatanungin ko, gaano ba kaimportante sa inyo ang promise? Yan. How important to you promises? And let's ask Tita Fe. Tita Fe, you are our source of uh, wisdom. How would you uh, define uh, promise or making a vow to somebody? Well, if I make a promise to someone, mm-hmm. I will do the best I can with the help of God mm-hmm. to comply with that promise. Kasi um, you're fulfilling the promise tells what kind of a person you are. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It shows what kind of a person you are when you comply with your, when you keep your promise. Mm-hmm. If you don't keep it, you're, you're like a bad person. You, mm-hmm. you know, you, you're missing some good qualities. Yes. Mm-hmm. So with God in us, we strive to be really... Uh, as... mm-hmm. Go ahead, Tita Fe. Go ahead. Tita Fe? Hello, Tita Fe? Okay, medyo nawala. Tita Fe. Oh. Ayan. Go ahead, go ahead, Tita Fe. 
Sorry na na mute ko eh. Sorry po. Ah, uh, oh yes, so I yeah. have to start. No, no, no. Uh, uh, just the, the last part again. po, the last sa last part lang po. Yung about the, sa promise. Yeah. Uh, for uh, in fulfilling the the promise um describes what kind of person one is. Mm -hmm. A good person usually complies with his promise. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't comply with a, if a person doesn't comply with his promise, his character is a question mark. Mm -hmm. You know, and we children of God are supposed to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we are supposed yeah. to be dependable, honest. You Amen. know. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing po na 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 natutunan ni Jonah dito is he needs to keep his vow to God na he will preach he will minister to the people of Nineveh no sa atin kanina sabi niyo po na we 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 need uh, we are the bearer of truth no we we have the name of Christ in us so kung lagi tayong imagine niyo sasabihin tayo pero iba naman yung ginagawa natin at di natin tinutupad yung mga sinabi natin, eh, I think, mami-misrepresent natin ang Diyos. Tama po ba? Yes, right. Uh -oh. Yes, amen. So, next, no? Tingnan natin dito. Mimit ko muna po, Tita Fea. Dali lang po. Yan. So, ang ginawa ni Jonah, no? he preaches to Nineveh. So nag-preach siya at tumanggap yung mga taga Nineveh, no? Pangalawa na learning na dapat natin matutunan. God doesn't want to let you go. Ang ganda nung sinear ni Ana kanina. Mga talagang hindi siya binitawan ng Diyos. Kahit tatakbo siya ng takbo. Kahit iniiwasan niya yung Sunday meeting na yun nung bata pa siya. No? Pero alam nyo, dahil sa kagustuhan at pat gustong patunayan ng Diyos na He doesn't want to let you go, He may go to an extreme to bring you back. Kagaya yung experience si Jonah. Ngayon, tatanin ko kayo. Was there any extreme experience para ibalik ka lang ng Diyos? Ayan, magandang tanong yan. So, i-unmute ko kay lahat. Sandali lang. Ayan. Anybody now can answer? Is there any uh, extreme experience na binigay sa'yo ng Diyos para lang ibalik ka niya? Yan. Kasi madami ako narinig na pastor na, na nag, dating lasengo, nagpipray sa mga alkoholik ngayon. Dating adulterer, nag, nagka-counsel ng mga adulterer ngayon. Dating uh, rape victim, sila ngayon yung nag-aalaga ng mga rape victim ngayon. So, somehow, there were extreme situations na experience mo kagaya ng Katsona. Pero yet, diba, ginagamit sila ng Diyos. Anybody? Sinang gusto mag-share? Meron ba kayo na-experience sa parang Jonah experience? Na kinain ni kayo ng fish? O, o kayo ang kumain sa fish? <laughs> Inihaw nyo. <laughs> I think one of my experiences, I think every single time is probably when I'm in a relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So when I'm in a relationship, I I literally get super uh, consumed with my relationship that mm -hmm. I steer away from God, mm -hmm. learning church, uh, going to church, mm -hmm. or spending time with Him, praying, um, learning about more of His teachings. Mm -hmm. Basically, my relationship becomes more of a priority. Yeah. And yeah. then later on, you see how that that relationship is not going to sustain me. So, mm -hmm. and he also said that if you put something before him, he will take it away for you mm -hmm. to come back. Yep. Amen. Amen. Naalala niyo si, ano, si Abraham tsaka si Isaac. Yep. Diba? Kasi si Isaac, matagal na nilang inihintay. Imagine mo, 100 years old ka na na binigay. Yung misis mo, eh, nagpas 90 anos na. So, ang tagal mong inihintay, so, nung binigay sa'yo, syempre, eh, mahal na mahal mo yon. So, tinest ng Lord yung faith ni, ni Abraham, di ba? Tapos, kinukuha yung pinakamamahal niya no? na, na si Isaac. Pero alam niyo yung response ni, ano, ni, ni Abraham? Abraham pa siya na, hindi pa siya Abraham eh. 
binigay niya si Isaac, willing siyang ibigay sa Lord. No? Tapos ang ginawa ni Lord, ibinalik sa kanya si Isaac. So ngayon, ang tanong, sino yung mga Isaac natin? Yung mga Isaac natin, ito yung mga worthless idols natin na kumukonsume ng oras natin, ng panahon natin, na talagang uunahin natin to sa lahat ng bagay, lahat ng pagkakataon, ihuli natin ng Diyos. Yung maganda yung sinishare kanina ni Jamie na yung sa kanya, yung, yung relationships, kabaga it ate up ng kanyang time, effort, kanyang opportunity. Kabaga, somehow it replaced yung kanyang focus sa Panginoon. Diba? How about the others? Meron ba kayo na experience sa ganoon? Uh, sabi din dito, God was trying to do things no, sa buhay ni Jonah. Gusto niyang isagip, sagipin si Jonah. Gusto niya rin sagipin yung Nineveh. Long arm of God's incredible love. Okay. Meron bang pagkakataon? So, yan, meet ko kay lahat. Meron bang pagkakataon? Was there any uh, uh, a situation in your life na in, in, you, in, you know na you were saved by God at the same time you were used by God after after ng situation mo, you were, you were used by God for others to get to know Him. Diba? Kagaya nung sinay kanina ni Tita Fe, ang ganda na, na, na dahil sa obedience niya sa Lord, no, habang nag, nami-ministry siya, habang nagtatrabaho siya, no, no, she was able to to share the gospel at the same time, she was able to to live a life of uh, with fulfillment and satisfaction dahil nandun siya sa presence ng Lord. How about kayo? Kasi long arms ang ano, incredible love ni Lord. Eh. No? Alam mo, sinaid ka, pinatawad ka, forgiven ka, tapos ginagamit ka pa. Ginagamit ka na may makilala yung mga tao. Yung makakilala yung tao sa Diyos. Anybody can answer. <coughs> Yaran ba kayong sitwasyon na gano'n? You were saved and then prepared ka ng Lord sa Nineveh mo. Sa Tagalog kasi yan, Nineveh. Sa English pag binabasa nila dito, madalas ko madinig, Nineveh. So, tingnan naman, tingnan naman natin muna sa sa learning number three. So, ipan na natin to. God wants to get you out of the belly of the whale more than you want out. Pero sinabi dito na He's more interested in delivering you than judging you. God loves to forgive than to judge. Ano mo sasabi niyo doon? God loves to forgive than to judge. Madami kasing tao ang pagkakilala sa Diyos. Eh, ano eh, no? Parang maikpit na judge. Parang matapang na judge na nako, lagot ka. Susubok ka ta kay Lord. Parang ganun. Pero bibigyan ko kayo ng isang story, no? Na mas makapag-identify kayo. Ito yung story ng understanding widower. Alam niyo, after a long shift, at the fire department, Matt Zwatzel fell asleep while driving no, and crashed into another vehicle, taking the life of pregnant mother, si June Fitzgerald, and injuring her 19-month-old daughter. Fitzgerald's husband, a full-time pastor, asked for the man's reduced sentence and began meeting with Zwatswell for coffee and conversation. So yung asawa nung napatay at na-injured na 19-month-old 19 na bata ay nag-ask sa judge na bawasan yung sentence no, ni Zwatswell. At nakikipagkapi siya palagi at lagi niyang kinakausap. Sabi dito, many years later, the men remain close. Someone asked the pastor, Why? Bakit? Bakit? No? Bakit kayo close? Bakit kayo nagkakape? Bakit kayo nag-uusap? At bakit nag-ask ka pa sa judge na bawasan yung sentence niya? E pinatay niya yung asawa mo at na-injured yung 19-month-old na baby mo. Alam niyo sagot ni Pastor Fitzgerald? You forgive as you've been forgiven. Ganda, no? Ganda ng sagot niya. You forgive as you've been forgiven. This is the type of person na naka-experience ng forgiveness. How about you? Uh, 
meron ba kayong situation na na parang nahirapan kayong mag-forgive or ikaw nahirapan mag- nahirapan kang mag-ask ng for, uh, forgiveness or feeling mo hindi ka fino forgive ng Diyos sa ginawa mo was there any kind of situation na ganun or malabo ba sa iyo ang ibig sabihin ng word na forgiveness anybody no kasi uh, ano mas uh, ah, sige pa go ahead go ahead oh <laughs> go ahead Anna. Uh, ano um through experience When I was when I was in elementary school, mm-hmm. ang sumusundo sa akin was my cousin, mm-hmm. yung kakatanda kong pinsan. Mm-hmm. And um, dumating yun sa punto ng sinasabi niyo na nahihirapan akong mag-forgive mm-hmm. because of what he've done to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kasi when I was when I was younger, mm-hmm. I guess nasasabi mo na yun na ano na as hope because he you know he he touches me mm-hmm. period so in my in my uh, situation before na sabi ko kaya ko bang pag, kaya ko bang kaya ko bang patawarin tong taong to like mm-hmm. you know imagine mo pinsan ko mm-hmm. gagawin sa akin mm-hmm. and at the very young age hindi ko kaya ng express yung sarili ko para para magsumbong, para magsabi. So I kept it to myself for very 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 long time. Mm-hmm. Pero talagang nagdasal ako noon. I, I I really pray to God na sabi ko, Lord, if this is one of the hindrances. Mm-hmm. Para lang sa blessings na ibibigay niyo sa akin, then mm-hmm. I have to learn to forgive. Mm-hmm. Kahit nang hirap-hirap sa akin kasi yung nangyari pero because God is a forgiving God and God is you know the the, the love of God para sa iyo is beyond compare. Mm. So doon ako nagbase na kung ang Panginoon nga no question ask kahit ano pa gaano pa kahit gaano pa ka lala yung ginawa ng isang tao. Mm. If that person asks for forgiveness, God not question that person but he forgive If he really, you know, if he really repent or if he really ask forgiveness, God will forgive. So yeah. yun yung inano ko sa akin, inapply ko na, yeah. Mm-hmm. Why, why? Para hindi. So yun na learn ko na ang hirap-hirap gawin. Sinasabi ng puso ko na kaya ko because mm-hmm. I'm God. Pero yung isip ko, hindi nagsasabay Mm-hmm. sa puso ko because mm-hmm. of the pain because of the experience that I had mm-hmm. pero eventually God you know like God is o- God is always on time God mm-hmm. is always you know works in mysterious ways mm-hmm. and He always send someone to clear mm-hmm. your mind kung ano man yung mga kung ano man yung mga pagdududa mo kung ano man yung mga tanong mo God always answered it hindi man hindi man physically God will be there, but then the spirit of the, you know, spirit of God mm-hmm. will, you know, magpapadala siya through spirit of God and God will talk to you in a way. Amen. So, yun yung akin. What, a beautiful, what a beautiful story of uh, you forgive as you've been forgiven, right? Baga marunong ka mag-forgive yes. kasi in-exemplify sa'yo ng Diyos eh, na-experience mo eh. Parang sino ka para hindi mag-forgive, di ba? E nag-uusapan mm-hmm. natin to kasi yung si Jonah, uh, naka-receive ng forgiveness sa Diyos eh. Tapos naka-receive din ng forgiveness ang uniniva sa Diyos, di ba? Uh, importante na maintindihan ng mga tao na pwede tayong patawarin ng Diyos. Pwede yeah. rin tayong magpatawad. Pwede rin tayong humingi ng tawad at patawarin tayo. Pero alam niyo, isa sa pinakamahirap na kadalasan hindi nare-realize ng tao, naisip nila, okay, pinatawad na ako ni Lord, naintindihan ko na. Okay, pinatawad na ako ng taong ginawa ko na kasalanan. Okay, nakapagpatawad na ako dun sa tao nagkasala sa akin. Pero alam niyo, madaming tao na hindi pa napapatawad yung sarili nila. Kaya hindi makamove on sa mga naging problema nila naging ano so 
maganda yung experience ni Ana na baga alam niya na itong situation na to hindi ma- hindi maganda pero kinamit ng Diyos para mas ma-appreciate pa ni Ana ang Diyos kung gaano siya makapagmapagmahal gaano siya nagpo-provide talaga ng mga sitwasyon sa kanya para maayos yung mga dati niyang sitwasyon no kumbaga hindi mo ma-appreciate ang Diyos kapag hindi mo na-experience yung belly do you agree with yeah. that no kailangan ma-experience mo muna yung belly na- na-imagine mo ba yung lahat naman siguro kayo nakakita na ng belly ng isda di ba masarap nga yan to na belly <laughs> Salmon deli. <laughs> Salmon deli, di ba? So na tayo nakita na ng gitang ng tiyan ng study, di ba? Yung pagnililinis ng mga nanay natin, tapos tinatanggalan ng bituka, di ba? So imaginein mo, pasok ka sa loob nun. Una-una madilim doon, wala namang ilaw sigurado doon. Diba? Madilim, tiny, mabaho, walang way out, tapos nakakasuka dahil galaw ng galaw siguro yung yung balyena. Tapos nakalubog ka siguro sa 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 acid. Sa liquid. Uh, imagine yung experience yeah. ito na pag hindi ka pa naman natakot doon. At imagine yun yung mga experiences natin sa buhay. Nakakatakot naman talaga. Pero tinanggal ka ng Diyos. Yeah. Di ba? Inalis ka niya doon. At uh, natuto ka mag-forgive because you've been forgiven. Di ba? Anybody else na nakapag-identify kay Pastor Fitzgerald kasi nag-forgive siya. Ang sakit kaya na namatay yung asawa mo? Na-injured yung 19-year-old baby mo? Kung sa iba-iba yun, eh, wala na, pinatukhang na tong si, ano, yung fireman. Pero hindi, eh, itong pastor na to, pinatawad niya, pinareduce niya pa yung sentence, tapos na- nakikipagkapi pa siya, nag starbucks starbucks pa siya siguro, at na naging kaibigan niya, madala silang magkaroon ng conversation. Ayan, nagtataka yung mga tao sa paligid niya. Sabi niya, bakit po, pastor? Sabi niya, you forgive as you've been forgiven. How about the others? <coughs> sa akin, pastor, yun. Go ahead, Bong. Uh, mga taong, aside from mga heart pains, mm-hmm. yung mga taong nagbigay din, mga taong gossiper, mga, mga nangutang, nanira. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ako, madami yan. Yeah. <laughs> Ang dami yan. Huwag uh, ka nalang magbanggit ng pangalan. <laughs> Dogo. Parang, minsan parang sa, sa tao, it's not really easy to parang for, just forget yung mga mm-hmm. karami nilang inutang sa'yo. Mm-hmm. And from that utang, they will also win your life by gossiping and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then they also connive and recruit people to go against you. Mm-hmm. It's just a material thing. Pero mm-hmm. nakakainit, di ba? Na in the real sense, man is not the root of everything for you to survive. But kapag pinaghirapan mo, especially, and then masisira ka dahil lang sa kanilang mga, mga taong wala ka namang ginawa pero wala silang ginawa kundi saktan, kahirapan ka. Mm-hmm. And people are, yung mga ganon. Mm-hmm. So, uh, napakahirap, ano? Especially, magkakaroon man ng mga arrangement, ganyan, ganyan, they will make promises. And then at the end, sasabihin lang talaga na, okay, can you forgive? And anyway, can you just forget that and just leave it to the to God. Mm-hmm. So that's the statement. Mm-hmm. In fact, talagang ako, ida, nilagay ko sa sarili ko talaga yung point na, okay, sabi ko, God can provide everything, sabi ko. Mm-hmm. Ang gusto kong maramdaman ngayon, I have the freedom to let these people go, to forget their utang-utang to me, mm-hmm. and bahala na sila sa mga isinira nila sa akin. The only thing I know is that it's like, I'm not being guilty of what they're accusing of me. Mm-hmm. And then, no matter what habang buhay, habang buhay sila, they will always remember that once in their lives, mm-hmm.
Go ahead, Bong. Medyo nawala ka. Bong? Hello, Bong? Ako ba ang nawala? Nawala si Bong. Hello? Ayun na, medyo nawala si Bong eh. Kala ko miyak na eh, nawala. Nawala, nawala. Oo. Anyway. Anyway. So, ito yung, hintayin na lang natin si Bong pagbalik mami. Ito yung learning natin. Baka nalobat. Baka nakanalobat nga. Ito yung learning natin. God expects you to keep your vows. God doesn't want to let you go. Kahit na magpapalag ka, hindi ka niya papakawalan, di ba? Pero siyempre, alam nyo, ang Diyos naman ay gentleman din. Kung ayaw mo talaga, eh, alam mo yun, free will yun eh. Dark side of free will eh. So, dapat, sundin natin yung good side of free will. And number three, God wants to get, to get you out of the belly of the whale more than you want out. Gusto mo na umalis na situation mo, eh, mas gusto ng Diyos na umalis ka dyan. Ayun. So, yun ang uh, ating, uh, ating topic for tonight. So, next Wednesday, no, we started with in a boat, running away from God. Jonah, in a whale, running to God. Pinag-usapan natin ngayon on the street of Nineveh, running for God. Next week, nako, meron na namang nangyari kay Jonah. Under a tree, nagbumokmok, running without God. Ayan, so, basahin nyo lang yung chapter 4. And, uh, ayan, under a tree, running without God. At uh, panoorin nyo, may video yun. Nyo. Pwede nyo panoorin sa Facebook, sa YouTube yung tatlong chapters na nauna. So, please be reminded, meron pong Sunday service sa Facebook at sa YouTube. Live yun, 10 o'clock ng umaga. Sa Texas, alas 12 ng tanghali yan. Every Wednesday, may 7 o'clock midweek service. no? Diyan, uh, 9 o'clock ng gabi. Tapos, may Bible study. Ito yun, 8 o'clock mm -hmm. sa Los Angeles, 10 o'clock dyan. So, kung ano yung pinag-uusapan sa midweek service, hindi yung pag-uusapan natin sa Bible study. In detail lang. Tsaka may mga examples. So, meron din Thursday, Friday. Every Saturday, alas 7 ng gabi hanggang alas 8. One hour lang. Zoom prayer party. So, lahat to puro prayer. Walang worship, walang preaching, walang teaching. It's all about testimonies and prayers. Yun lang. So parang pastor, hati, anong araw yun, Pastor? Every, every Saturday, 7 p.m. Every Saturday, 7 to 8 p.m. So ano dyan? 9 to 10 p.m. Sa Texas. 9, yeah. Nalobat daw po si Bong. Oo, oh, nalobat nga eh. Tapos sa I Sunday nga, <laughs> sa Sunday, I'll be preaching about ano, sa yung naging experience si Joseph, The Pain in My Heart. Yun yung title nun. So, uh -huh. hope to see you on Sunday, 10 o'clock sa Facebook at sa YouTube. So, ipanalangin natin si, si Bong at uh, yung kanyang uh, nararamdaman. Is there any prayer request na gusto niyong ipag-pray? Tanggaling ko na itong stop sharing. Ayan. Uh, any prayer request na gusto niyong ano? Pagpagin natin ay, ay, yung ay, ay, fever ni Bong. Ay, Bong ay, ay na po si Bong. Si Bong. Ay, Bong. Prayer request, ay. Bong. Ay. Sister Fe, prayer request. No, wala, Pastor. Apa. How about you, Sister girl, Anna? Boy. Prayer request. Girl, boy. Uh, continuous protection, Pastor, for everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not specifically, but you know, it's for everybody. Um, sorry, pa. Nalo, 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 but I'm sorry, po. Okay, lang, bong, no problem. Um, is there anything you wanna add, bong, before okay. we, you know, before we pray? Uh, yun lang po. So what? With the story, to make the story short. Yes. Mm -hmm. Leave those uh, maraming pautang and those people mm -hmm. in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. 
and I said, like, God will provide. I just need to move on. Yep. Continue my life, and God will provide more blessings to me. And Amen. it happens, bro. Sabi nga, eh, forgive, no? As you were forgiven. Amen. How about you? Amen. May prayer request ka, Bong? Pagpipray natin yung fever mo na mawala. Um, sure. Probably mm. like, sa lahat na. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay na rin na, no? So, okay na. But, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, uh, prayer request, Reggie, George, Jamie. Uh, help uh, lang sa help. Yung help po, at saka yung mm-hmm. business po, ano, na ibalik, uh, ilid kami ni Lord sa mga nangangailangan. Tapos, mm-hmm. ilap sa amin ngayon yung business mo dahil ilap pa kami kumuha ng client. Pero yung iba, hindi ko alam kung paano sana bigyan ako ni Lord ng wisdom. At saka mm-hmm. yun lang. Yung iba kasi pasto nakakagulat eh. Out of ano pandemic, nakakadami pa ng sale. Ibang lahi. Oh, ah, baka kasi na, they're, kuya. they're using the situation. Yes. Oh. Ako yung share ko sa about Italy, yung Red Cross na bigyan ng certification yung yes, COVID-19. Oh. Sana it will work out for you after nito. Basta basta i-open lang kayo ng governor niyo, okay? Eh. Yes. Yeah. Any more prayer uh, request? Health, wisdom, strength, and discernment. Wow, ganda naman nun. Pongga! Discernment is... And maging... No, ay hindi pala joke for real. <laughs> discernment is very good. Yeah, discernment is very good. Yes. Oh, sige, manalangin tayo. Let's pray. Amen. Let's all uh, bow our heads and uh, close our eyes as I lead you into prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for your yes. wisdom. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that you taught us about the life of Jonah. Thank you, Lord God, for uh, uh, for teaching us to forgive. Thank you, Lord God, to, for teaching us to ask for forgiveness from you. Thank you, Lord God, for teaching us uh, to keep our promises, to keep our vows to you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for le- not letting us go to be slipped away from your hands. Lord, thank you for all the opportunities that uh, uh, in spite of the pandemic, Lord God, we are here and uh, we are learning your word, from us, Lord God. Lord, we pray for Brother Bong. Uh, we pray that uh, you... Heal him. You're the complete healer, Lord God. Heal him with your uh, sa fever, niya, Lord God. Remove the fever, Lord God, right away. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray for all of us and uh, for our loved ones and for all the people around us, especially the entire world. Lord, we pray that uh, you protect us from yes, COVID-19. We pray that uh, you yes, stop the pandemic, Lord God. We will not stop praying, Lord, uh, and, uh, and knock on heaven's door, Lord God, to, uh, for you to to act, Lord God, and do something sa pandemic, Lord, and uh, you, you put a stop on this, Lord God. Kayo lang po may kapangyarihan na kayo po ang magpapatigil sa ganyan yes, situation. We pray for good health for Reggie yes, and his family. We pray for uh, more clients for them, Lord God, as they venture out to a new uh, a product, Lord God, for a new business. We pray for wisdom, Lord God. We pray for strength, Lord God. We pray for discernment, Lord God. We pray for Jamie, Lord yes. God, that you, keep to, that you continue to reveal yourself to her, Lord God. We pray for, for yes. George, Lord God, that you continue to bless him as he leads his family, the entire family. Yes. We pray for their house. We pray for Anna and her family, Lord God. Keep them safe yes. and bless uh, everything, Lord God, that they will touch. We pray for Shikate, for good health, long life, Lord yes. God, and more wisdom. And I keep her away, Lord God, from any sickness. We pray for Brother Bong, Lord God, that you continue to uh, heal him and continue to uh, to grow him, Lord God, spiritually. We thank you for this gathering every Wednesday. We pray for all the people who will join us. May we find friendship, family in this group. As you lead us, Lord God, in your love, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you guys. Marami marami. Amen. It's another beautiful Wednesday evening uh, with you. Uh, na miss natin si Sandy. Na miss natin yung 
Ito <laughs> si ate, ano? Bernadette naman po. Bernadette. Ano, kasi binay ang mga pasok. May pasok yeah, anyway. na kasi. Anyway, gusto nyo ba mas maaga uh, gawin natin na let's say 6 o'clock dito, 8 o'clock dyan? Pwede, no? Pwede. Pwede para maka-join po sila kasi may mga pasok na po sila. Oh, kasi para yung may pasok, maaga makatulog. We can do it yeah. 6 o'clock dito. But is that okay? Okay, That's good. So, yeah, we'll we'll do that. I'll I'll, I'll change the the I know the uh, hello. <laughs> I'll change the schedule. Hey, hello. Asta, this time I mean, I mean, tawo kita Reggie, pakita ka. Pakita ka mo na. Hindi na mo. Hello Reggie. Hola. <laughs> Payat mo ah. Ha? Payat? Payat mo. Hindi, <laughs> nakatago lang yung taba. <laughs> Nakikinig ako sa inyo dito. <laughs> Nakabless naman si Ano. Oh, Nakabless naman yung katabi mo dyan, si Ano, Jamie. Ha? <laughs> Jamie, you want to point? Hello. 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 Pakilala ko pala muna sa inyo si Ano. Si Tita Fe. Tita Fe, uh, si Tita Fe, uh, isa sa mga board members namin sa church. Tita Fe, I would like to meet, I would like you to meet si Ana, Hello. si Pong, si Reggie, si Jamie, at si, uh, si George. Inasa likod ko po si Mini, sa po nanay ko. <laughs> Wait, nice year ko na sinabi ni Bren. <laughs> Ayan. Uh, Sila po, Tita Fe, mostly nasa Texas po sila. Kayo lang ang nasa California. Hopefully pa next week madami. Yeah, next week, hopefully, mas madami tayo para mas masaya. At uh, mas madami tayong matutunan. Hello! Anong pangalan mo? <laughs> Gandang bata hey, naman ito. Hi, Savannah! <laughs> <laughs> so, so guys, thank you. Ito yung ate. Thank you, Pastor. Have a nice thank evening. You. Thank you. Happy midweek. Hope to see you on Sunday. Please watch our sermon on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. See you next Wednesday. God bless you. Bye. God bless. Bye. Bye. Bye.